Our teaser artist acrylics cost $25 for all of this. But are they any good? Yes. Like all tools, they have limits, but you just have to work around them. This isn't a sponsored video. I bought these myself because I geek out on stuff like this. I was pretty surprised by the results though. Let me show you. So after popping it out of the tube, it looks like any other heavy body acrylic. Maybe a touch on the fluid side. This colour is raw umber, the perfect base for a hench uh. Pikachu. Yes, I know, working up from a dark base with yellow can be an absolute nightmare. But honestly, I prefer it because it leaves the shadows in place. I'd much rather paint a few more layers of yellow than add in all those shadows later. To test the paint's adhesion, I popped it on in lieu of a primer. Bosh. If you like these silly little models as well, I think I found them on Thingiverse. So I'll try and pop the links down in the description below. Honestly, initial first impressions of the paint was it felt a little gloopy and weird. But once it thinned down, it was actually pretty nice. It went on perfectly. And three coats later, we have a nice, smooth base coat. Test one. Past. Another little point to note here is this paint dries glossy. It's not a problem, we can fix that later. It's just something to bear in mind. A few more trials with some other colours just to make sure it's not a fluke, and then we're on to the next step. So far this paint is behaving pretty normally. I'm impressed. The yellow layers are more challenging, but before we get there, I just want to talk about the paints a little bit. One of the reasons I was interested in the paint in the first place was the neat packaging. In this pack are 24 colours. They come stacked together in a neat box, and if you like, you can buy the smaller set, which is 12 paints, or the larger set, which is 60 paints. You can see them all laid out here. If you want to give them a shot, there are links down below. Anything you purchase using those links doesn't cost you anything extra, but helps support the channel. I really appreciate it. Once you spread the paints out, you'll get a nice visual representation of their coverage. Obviously, this is over a white background, and the coverage will be a little bit worse over a black background. The information on the top of the tubes is useful too. It's broadly in line with what you'd expect on any art brand. There's a colour band, which broadly corresponds to the colour inside the tube, along with four other pieces of information, which tell you about the properties of the paint. Number one, the name of the paint. The names of the paint they use are industry standards, which is a nice touch. No Dragon Ball Reds or Snape Greens here. Number two, the pluses show the light fastness. Light fastness is just how fast the paint degrades or fades under UV light, i.e. the sun. As most hobbyists are troglodytes who spend most of their time in the dark inside, it's not going to affect you too much, don't worry about it. Number three, what will affect you are the pigment numbers. This lists the exact pigment that's used in the paint, so you can easily see whether it's a single pigment paint or whether they've used multiple pigments to make up a tone. That's important when you're colour mixing, but it's also a useful comparison to note when you're comparing it against other brands that use pigment numbers, like Chimera, for example. But honestly, I'm just a nerd about this sort of stuff, so it may not even be interesting to you. You tell me. Lastly, this little square shows how transparent the paint is. A fully blocked in square shows the paint's fully opaque. A half and half square shows the paint's semi-opaque. And a completely empty square shows the paint's transparent. Useful to know. Now this seems like a good time to ask you to watch the video all the way through to the end and comment. There really is no better thing you can do to help the channel grow. Thank you so much. Let's chuck some yellow on now. This is yellow after all, so I was expecting it to go on in several layers and be fairly transparent because yellow. It did not disappoint. However, three coats later and I've got a warm yellow base. I progressively added in more yellow layers, hoping to build up a neat transition over those hench muscles. By laying them down in progressively smaller and smaller layers, I'm actually pretty impressed with the results. I did run into some issues leaving texture behind, so I had to work quite hard to avoid that. But as I experimented with the paint more and got the thinning consistency right, it was actually a little bit better. I was also painting about 25 degree heat too, so that will have made a difference as well. I also have no idea why I used such a terrible brush when I was painting this model. This is an old Raphael 8404, but it's at least two years old and has no tip. I'm just too tight to throw it away. In the end though, I'm well happy with how it looks. I could choose to spend some more time smoothing it all out with glazes, but at the end of the day, this is a practice model, so on to the next one. Now let's try some colour mixing and see how this paint really plays out. All we're going to do is we're going to mix them up. This is going to give us an indication of the vibrancy of the pigments. Basically, if when the paints are mixed together, the colours still turn out nice and bright, then we know the pigments that are used and the mixes will give us vibrant colours, which is what I'm chasing. If the colours turn out more muted, well, that's not necessarily a problem, it just gives us something to work with. Here are three primaries. Red, blue, and yellow. And we're going to mix them together into their secondaries. Purple, orange, and green. And I'm going to stack them up against my favourite paints, Chimera. Same colours. Red, blue, 
yellow, same secondaries, purple, orange, green. Hopefully you can really see the difference between both. The colours from both are really nice, but the colours from Chimera are much more intense. Interestingly though, the oranges are broadly the same. The greens and the purples though look a little bit muddier. Now that's fine, it's just something to note and work around. And obviously you don't have to mix your colours, you can just use them as intended, straight out of the tubes. The biggest difference you'll see actually, is that the Chimera colours look a little bit darker. When you add more pigments to paint, it gradually gets darker. As you add more colours to that too, you eventually end up with black. It's called additive colour theory. Just to hammer home the point a little bit more, I'm just going to extend the paint a little bit and see if we can find a breaking point, which you can just about make out at the end of the orange. A bit more obvious on the purple, and really obvious on that green. For the Chimera paints, again the oranges perform broadly the same, but the greens are much more intense. Yeah, check that out. And that dark purple becomes much more obviously a violet colour when you extend it. Interesting. Let's try something a little bit more interesting. Let's mix up some skin tones. Make up a range of colours, and then pop them onto a practice bust I have knocking around. I 3D printed this one from Thingiverse, and I'll try and chuck the link in the description below. Again, there's nothing fancy about this bust, it's just basic layers laid down over about an hour. But as you can see, the paint performs pretty well. It blends pretty nicely, and the skin tones look pretty good. I wasn't going for a hyper-realistic look here, I just wanted to see how they went onto a model, really. I also wanted to try them out on something a bit more familiar. So, the Blood Angels get the treatment as well. Just going over the work I'd already done, this is going straight over the new Baal Red contrast paint, and honestly it looks pretty good. So I've got a good feel for the paints now. Are these paints going to replace my Chimera or my Pro Acryls? Short answer, no, they're not. But I am seriously impressed. Don't forget Chimera paints to get 27 paints cost around £150 plus shipping, if you can get them in stock. Whereas these cost about £25. That's a big difference. So I'd definitely be recommending these for, say, someone just starting miniature painting. Seriously, I'm properly impressed. When I first came across our teaser about a year ago, I found a company with a stated mission to supply decent quality art supplies at accessible prices. And I think they more than live up to that. Good job. And with the cost of living crisis affecting more and more people, there's never been a better time to have some cheap hobby supplies in your toolbox. Thank you so much for the love and support. I really appreciate it. Catch you later.